A draft U.S. law is casting a cloud over some Chinese pharma firms. The Biosecure Act aims to block certain foreign biotech companies from accessing U.S. federal contracts on national security grounds. And among them is UC Aptech, which U.S. lawmakers accuse of being a PLA affiliated company. They manufacture medical products and supply essential ingredients to some of the world's top pharmaceutical companies. And UC Aptech generated 65% of its 2023 sales from the United States. And that is now a source of revenue, Yvonne, that is under threat. Yeah, we've been trying to talk a little bit more and dig, maybe do a deeper dive into this healthcare space, just given the headlines that we've seen, right? And even though the bill hasn't been passed, take a look at the weight it has on the firm here in terms of these geopolitical risks. The Hong Kong listed stock has fluctuated since the U.S. Senate Committee advanced the act earlier this month, and shares of its sister company, Wuxi Biologics, is also under pressure. Both stocks have lost over half, have been cut in basically in half this year, making them the worst performers on the Hang Seng Index. And in an open letter, we heard, did hear from Wu Xi Aptek calling the U.S. legislation, quote, misguided, and says the firm does not pose a national security risk to any country. It isn't the only Chinese company in the crosshairs, though. For more, let's bring in our senior medical reporter, Michelle Cortez, joining us along with Rebecca Liang. She's a senior research analyst for China Farmer and Biotech at Bernstein. Michelle, I'll start with you. Thanks so much for joining us, by the way. First of all, are they a threat to U.S. national security? Well, I mean, what a great question, Yvonne. And of course, that comes, that's the crux of the entire issue, right? There's two things, actually, that are happening here. There is the potential threat to U.S. security, national security. Some of the companies that have been mentioned in this bill do do things like provide genomic research, genomic work, and theoretically would hold information about Americans' health. Then there's also Wuxi Aptech, which does an awful lot of the manufacturing, research and development, that kind of thing. But it's not just the individual health of Americans. There's also the economic benefit. China has really focused on biotechnology as an industry of the future. They want to have a key role. The U.S. completely leads the world in this space, does not want to give an inch. So not only do you have the national security, the personal integrity, but there's also an overlay of economics here. Yeah, and Rebecca, maybe chime in. Beyond just maybe punishing Wuxi in this biotech bill, I mean, what do you think the U.S. is trying to achieve? Well, um, I think, Yvonne, there are two different things. Um, we look at the targeted companies. Uh, BGI is in genomic, genomic sequencing, and Wuxi is in the space of CDMOs. They provide capacity for biologics. So I think with the, the threat, the, the alleged threat on national security, it's more about the uh, genomic data, the sensitive personal information. Right? But I think for CDMOs, it's quite different. Um, what the politicians in the US, the U.S. have stated is that they would like to keep U.S. leadership in the capacity and the supply of, global, uh, of the biologics globally. Uh, and they see uh, companies like Aptech and biologics as an emerging threat to that. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, you know, um, although both companies are Wuxi, they have essentially the same owners, uh, Wuxi Biologics have made an earlier move to expand their capacities in the U.S. Uh, they now have 10% of their capacity in the U.S., in, in, Ma in Massachusetts. And by 2024, uh, 2026, that number is going to further go up to something like 40%. So, you know, Wuxi Biologics, in that sense, is um, actually having more stakes or having, uh, having done more localization in the U.S. versus Aptech, which is more targeted now for ha not having any capacity in the U.S. at all. So, Rebecca, what do you think is going to be the, the ultimate impact here? Do you think that, mm -hmm. that Wuxi, Aptech, and Biologics, are they going to have to divest? If it does go through, where do you think it's going to fall out in the end? Um, I think the, the ultimate impact depends not only on whether the bill passes, uh, we don't know, right? It also depends on if the bill passes, how it's going to be the result. Um, the result, in my opinion, is uh, I think a hard landing scenario is quite unlikely mm -hmm. because uh, the U.S. also has a lot of stakes. We know that public companies like Lilly have stated that they really depend heavily on the contracts with Wuxi Biologics. Uh, it would be hard for them to switch their supply chain entirely in a, in a very short time frame. 
Um, so I think now you also see when it comes to the bill itself, there's grandfather clause that exempts some of the earlier contracts. There's also a grace period up to two years um, for it to materialize. You know, not to mention there are also waivers that you could make. So all in all, um, I think it would be quite against the national interest of the U.S. as well to go for a complete hard landing, given that these companies do manufacture you know, life-threatening, uh, life-saving medicines, right? Do you think the, the stock reaction we've seen has been quite dramatic? Has yeah. that priced in already the worst case scenario then? Uh, yeah, I mean, the you know, markets are really, I think, driven by emotions now. It's, both stocks are down over 50% year to date. Uh, our colleagues at Bernstein who do cover Wuxi Biologics think that you know, it's already beyond the worst case scenario. Hmm. Um, but I, I think it's, you know, emotions are everywhere and people, it seems the market is trying to figure out what is exactly the worst case. And I think what the capital market is, uh, you know, the, is deciding at this point is a bit decoupled from the actual business sense, you know, which is going back to how, you know, a, a hard landing case is not in the best interest for yeah. both China and the U.S. I mean, it goes with the timing. I mean, are the bills going to pass, for one thing? How long do you think it's going to take? And what are the pros and cons around the timing, Michelle? Right. Well, I mean, whether or not the bill is going to pass, this is one of those things where we're trying to read the tea leaves on American politics right now. I mean, it's a nightmare. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not covering that all the time <laughs> because what they're doing over there is crazy. This is one of the very few areas where there is bipartisan agreement. Everybody wants to come down on China. They definitely don't want to give an inch. So there is you know, collaboration that we haven't seen across any other industry. That being said, Republicans do not want to give Joe Biden any type of a win coming into this election year. So perhaps there's going to be some pushback there. We don't know. It's definitely going to take a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yvonne, the other thing we haven't talked about, although Rebecca did, did touch on it, there is huge ramifications for the global pharmaceutical supply chain. Yeah. That means if you're taking obesity medicines, if you're taking Lily's obesity medicines and we do have a hard landing, it's tough to get them now. It could be impossible to get them going forward. It is not possible to overestimate or to over to overspeak how important yeah. this industry is to the U.S. And Rebecca, maybe you can add to that. I mean, if this law goes into effect, who is it going to impact the most? Is it, is it some of the, the big companies or are we talking some of the small ones? Is it, are we likely to feel it from the consumer as well? Right. So... Um, as of now, the named entities are just, just genomic, uh, BGI and Wuxi Aptek. Aptek, uh, there's no public information to support this, but it's widely accepted that they do have a big order from Eli Lilly. And this goes to what Michelle was saying, you know, ZBound it has been launched a couple months ago, and Lilly has repeatedly said that they're going to face supply difficulties. Although they're building their own large expansion, it's not going to be in time for the next few years. And so I think for sure GLP-1s, um, the shortage would continue. Not to mention that there are more serious medicine, like, you know, in oncology and other life-threatening cases than just obesity meds. So, Rebecca, it's not even just, though, Wuxi Aptek, because the bill is supposed to be looking at a whole host of other companies, right? right? They're going to ask the government to weigh in on different things, and that could be weighing on the China biotech healthcare sector as well. Last year wasn't great with the crackdown on corruption. Now this year we're having this geopolitical fight. What do you think about the broader healthcare industry in China and Asia in general? Right. So, so um, the bill definitely, uh, in terms of name entities, it's limited, but we know that there are blanket statements that could affect the whole space of China biotech and CDMOs. Um, I think that you know, we see that um, uh, stocks of biotechs in China, in a way, they have been dragged down also by this whole uh, Wuxi story. Um, in terms of headwinds, uh, there's, you know, t times are tough for China biotechs. We, we know that, you know, the, the indices are down for some time. Um, but what we're seeing now is some of the headwinds earlier, they're dissipating a bit. You know, for example, the uh, overhang of the um, anti-corruption campaign that's been, been in effect since last year. We see that the result is uh, limited in terms of the drug sales that's coming out. Um, in the third quarter, it was only down 2%. 
uh, on the industry average and on the fourth quarter is supposed to be even better. We also see that leading companies, they can totally survive this better than others. Uh, in event that which, which is in our coverage, they reported over 30% growth in, even in the second, second quarter of last year, even amidst the, uh, the campaign. So I think uh, the headwinds are a bit, you know, gone compared to before. Also, we see signs of recovery. Uh, investment that goes into clinical research uh, in the form of a new number of new clinical trial starts. They have been in straight decline for the past two years. But starting from end of last year, we also see an uptick again. Right, so I think the fundamentals of the industry still look very strong. Uh, in a way, the, uh, uh, what's triggering this whole political drama is that China has indeed been advancing on the innovation drug, innovative drugs. Uh, a few years back when we started the coverage, um, we saw that there was almost no real uh, innovation in China. There was almost 0% uh, drugs called first in class. These are you know, the truly innovative ones. But today, that number has gone up to about 10 to 20% of the entire national uh, pipeline. I mean, we saw hundreds of bankruptcies within the, the, the pharma space just last year. I mean, are you right. expecting this consolidation in the industry to speed up in any way this year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we saw the acceleration of bankruptcies, of acceleration uh, by about 30, 40 percent last year. I think that trend's going to continue. That's actually good for the industry because we know there's earlier there's been quite a lot of over oversupply in drugs that are more or less the same, mm -hmm. you know, the Me Too drugs. Um, but I think now we're seeing that the one thing is the, fun, the funding drought that's still going on. Uh, it's bad news for the tail companies, but we see that the leading players, again, they're able to find other creative ways of financing. For example, uh, last year we saw that the our licensing deals, which involve these companies selling the overseas rights of their innovative drugs to MNC partners, um, the upfront payments of those deals yeah. have actually gone up so much that they have compensated for the uh, lack of funding from the capital market. Hmm. Uh, so um, I think the, the, you know, the leading players will find ways to get out of this.